stay with your victim. He's a loser. He'll find some way to defeat himself. He'll talk too much. He'll talk when he should shut up and listen. He never learns anything because he cannot see the other side. He cannot projectively, emotionally, projectively anticipate the other side. Observe and listen. Step back. It's the Marco step back. And look at the picture from the outside. In other words, you're talking to the woman. Let's say it's the woman. And it's a two-party conversation. It's really more than that. You step out of the interaction and view it as a Martian, as a completely objective stranger with nothing at stake. You could care less whether you make the contact or don't make the contact or are successful or are not successful. You don't care less about that. His only job is to very ruthlessly and objectively report on the facts of the case right before. You have the power to do that. Step outside the experience. That only comes true if you're not desperate, horny, despondent, Get yourself on your self-supports. Don't need that woman. Don't come in addicted to the presence. Talk like a man. Be a man. No child. Doesn't matter. You have to have the attitude. Goodbye and good luck. I've got others. I've got contingency go to hell plans. I don't need you. That's the point. Everybody can be replaced. Everybody. The key is not to get addicted to the presence. You have to move step by step very, very slowly. Don't have any expectations for any outcome, positive or negative. Want and embrace what's happening right now, even if it goes against you, even if it's the worst thing that worst possible omen, the things that are happening right now. The woman's double talking him. She's mocking him indirectly, and they're experts at that. She's evading him, and they're experts at that. She's promising and then reneging, and they're experts at that. It was your fault, short man, because you didn't expose her. You didn't ask yourself the right questions. Where do I stand with this woman right here and now? And be realistic. And take her out to the toughest environment you possibly can think of and give her all the excuse and all the room to get away from me. Any excuse, we accept it. No means no. And we move on. We let go and we move on. Remember, short, small man, there are others. Is this the only woman in the world? There are others, a lot of others, better than this piece of garbage you are trying to impress. You have to be that ruthlessly objective. It's not a game. It's your life, man. But you can only do this if you get yourself in good shape. If you're walking around with bad posture and like a dead dog, already dead, just needs to lie down, a beat dog, you brought this hell on yourself. Then all you can do is roll over and die. Where's your power coming from? What's the source of your power? You be in control of your fantasies, your delusions, your escapes. Now, we cannot live without delusions of grandeur, without fantasies, without escapes, no matter what anybody tells you. It's like what Mr. Sinatra says, religion is nothing but a bottle of jack and whatever gets you through the night, baby. It's a good philosophy. It's a 
balls to the wall realistic philosophy. And it helps you to be, to be in control of your of the, your sentiments, your emotions. You take charge of them. They don't charge. They don't order you around. You're in control. You're the master. And that's what I call being master of your own fate. You're the master, not your emotions, not your sentiments, not your desires, not your jealousies, not your phony expectancies, not your comparisons. There's a situation. There's all you can do, bring into the situation, and you get the hell out. Beginning, middle, and end. Goodbye is powerful. You know, there's a lot of sentiment around the word goodbye. No. Goodbye is probably the most powerful word of all, and most positive. Goodbye. Goodbye. I don't need you. I don't need you. It is your right, your prerogative to say no to me anytime you want, without explanation, without justification. And my attitude it should be, just go, get the hell out of here, I don't need you. Then get the hell out of here, I've got others. That's the key. But you have to be in tremendous shape mentally and physically according to your potential. You, but you don't know your potential until you drive iron and find out what the limitations are and try to figure out how to push past those limitations. Never come into the iron room and say, I don't have the genetics. I don't have the potential. Bullshit! Let the experience, don't compare yourself to the other bodybuilders. And there's all different types, ecto, meso, endo, short, tall, whatever. Pretty boy, ugly guy like me. Doesn't matter. You're in a room to drive iron and get to build the most brutally powerful physique you possibly can. That's also functional. That's your goal. You're not there to socialize. You're not there to meet women. You're not there to compete with the with with the uh, weight room jocks. Let the glory boys do their own thing. You're here to work and work damn hard and push past what your genetics says you can't do. But the genetics don't talk. That's genetics is interpreted by him. Fuck him. In most cases, he doesn't know what he's talking about unless he's an expert. In most cases, it's just babble. It's just one up upsmanship in the gym. That's all it is. Don't fall for that crap. Don't be a victim of that crap. That's it for today.